I have to tell you that uh, I came about with the uh, local currency around 2003, I think, more or less. I was living in Germany and I went backpacking all over Europe and then I made a stop, a very long stop in Netherlands. And over there I met the people from the foundation STRO. STRO is the acronym for social trade organizations. And they, they introduced me to local currencies. And back then, I thought it was a bit crazy because actually, you know, the countries of Europe were just leaving behind their own currency and having a, 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 a regional one, you know. So I thought it was, it was not very, it was not a very good idea. But then I start reading, I start um, educating myself. And um, at the end in 2000, I think it was 2004, this same organization offered me a job in Central America as a project a project manager for their projects in the region in in in, in um, Honduras and Costa Rica, uh, but there the, there was almost no projects, only one in Honduras, and and uh, so they I had to start by identifying possible counterparts. So I started more or less formally. I think I started in two thousand four. And never since, um, well, until 2010, which I, I left the foundation for my, my PhD studies, um, we started, we made the um, feasibility uh, study for, I think it was around 16 uh, local currencies all over Latin America. Um, we started from the feasibility studies, we started around nine, I think, or yes, nine which, which uh, some of them are still working uh, in Costa Rica. Two of them are working in Honduras. Two of them are working in El Salvador is one of the most, uh, the successful one for, for, from my perspective. Uh, other projects didn't, didn't reach maturity projects in Nicaragua. There was a project in Costa Rica that also didn't work out very well. Then with the same foundation, I moved to to the Andean region. I moved to Colombia, to Bogota, and we start doing some feasibility studies over there in Colombia and in, in, in uh, Ecuador. In Ecuador, they had a um, social economy ministry. We did uh, three uh, feasibility studies at the same time, hand in hand with a local foundation called Pachamama Foundation. And we, start, we started three projects. I think it was 2007, 2008. And um, those projects were reaching very, you know, were, they were working pretty well. They were reaching maturity, but the national government decided to stop it. So um, it was a, a bad situation, but back then I was already uh, getting ready for starting my PhD studies in, in Italy. So I have to tell you that my background with um, local currency is um, around 10 years doing feasibility studies and then following the implementation and sometimes even evaluating them. I was invited by, by projects in Asia and Europe to review them and make them make recommendations to them. Uh, so I have um, my perspective is from the economic perspective. I really don't like to talk about local money. I rather talk about alternative means of exchange which is a broader concept. And also this makes for me, uh, alternative means of exchange or local currencies as you want to call them, they make sense only if they are a part of a local uh, development strategy. If they are not part of a local economic development, then to me, it doesn't make much sense. It's probably a, a very nice or very interesting exercise that I'm usually not used to get involved. So for me, the feasibility study is about that, about the understanding the, the local development conditions and then uh, ans uh, design the currency to answer it as a as an strategy. I've been working, reading, and supervising PhD uh, and master degree thesis on, on, on local currencies. And I have to tell you that uh, from, you know, from my experience, Back in 2000, back in the year 2000, just a feasibility study, it was a lot of effort, a lot of money invested on the feasibility study just to come up 
for instance, just to come up with um, uh, a recommendation of not doing a project like it happened to us in, in Colombia with the first feasibility study we did. But right now, the vision, the, 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 the way I see it is that um, the technologies, the information and, and the technicalities and the information is so widespread and is so cheap right now in comparison with uh, 20 years ago that um, the in my opinion, local currency will become more and more and more used to, you know? Um, there is a very famous uh, PhD thesis uh, done in, in Netherlands that um, classify the, um, the reasons why people uh, uh, communities do local currencies and uh, they make a, a, very big a very big difference between developed societies like Europe or the United States and developing societies like the ones we have in Latin America. And most of the time, the, um, the reasons for doing um, a Latin America a project in developing countries like I have seen is as a part of, of, um, of uh, creating an extra income. Uh, and it makes the local economy more resilient, you know, while in the north, uh, this might be true as uh, also, but it's also part of the um, thinking outside the, the establishment, thinking about outside the box, you know, not being, not being part of the, of the system. So um, that's, that's the main two reasons. And I think this is becoming, you know, my vision is that these two visions, these, these two ideas or, 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 or objectives of creating uh, local currencies are becoming more, more, more uh, strong. And the, and the reason that the IT technology is more available, it will create much more currencies than we already have. Um, in the last review, academic review um, I made, the bi bi bibliographical review I made, we could count around 500 local currencies, uh, but I'm sure that in the future we will have many more, and most of them um, virtual. I think most of them are virtual. Virtual are safer, cheaper, and easier to use because almost everyone has now um, has, a, has now a, a mobile phone. You know, um, maybe in the middle of the in the middle of the of the of the pandemic, we support uh, a community, a rural community in Ecuador to start their own currency called Hurupis. And it was fully, fully developed uh, virtual. And most of the people didn't have uh, internet on their mobiles. And we use SMS. It, it, it's, really, it's really amazing the speed that this is going uh, in comparison with the designs we made 20 years ago. <laughs> When we were making the blueprint for a series of local currencies in Latin in, in Central America, we were just thinking, you know, I'm talking about 2004, 2005. Um, we were dreaming or, or on having uh, at least three local currencies with printed money on Costa Rica, two or three in Nicaragua, two or three in Honduras, two or three in, in uh, El Salvador, and two or three in, in Guatemala. At the end, this this didn't happen. You know, it was just our dream. We we came we came up with some of them in Costa Rica. We at the at the end we had two that's still working, and I still some I still have some some money here, like this one. This one is from Coprebrisas. This is part of our design. This is one of this is the one one of the ones that are not working, but we have all those others like the one of the 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 one from Cope Victoria. This is this is a still working, and back then let me show you the. This is a ten thousand col, uh, colones bill or or UDIs, and this is um, a two thousand. Um, back then we were just dreaming about the fact that uh, people from one country could go to other country. No, first we dream of country uh, of currencies in in the same country going to the different places and exchanging their, exchanging their money uh, freely, you know? We were dreaming of that, but that's very complicated because, because, of the, um, because of the cost associated with each project, you know? We have to remember, uh, for me it's very important, the conceptual part of money is very important. So we have to remember that money is an agreement, just an agreement. 
the US dollar and the Costa Rican colony is an agree agreement imposed by the government, but money still is an agreement. So um, the fact that you go to, uh, to any country, Argentina, Brazil, or uh, no, I don't know, Romania, and people accept uh, US dollars is part of, 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 of an agreement that uh, to use US dollars as a global currency. So we were dreaming on having a um, software instrument where we have all the, the different currencies in Central America. And when people move to one, from one uh, uh, territory to another territory, just to register in the database and then go there, uh, 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 go, go to the other place where the other currency is and exchange it one by one as part of, of an international agreement for use local currency. We were dreaming of that, but just the, um, just the technical challenges and the cost of those challenges, we knew back in 2007 that we could do it uh, from, the pro, uh, from the software program perspective, but that was going to be very expensive, you know? And uh, so we were just dreaming about a caja de compensación or local money exchange. So that was just part of a dream. And um, as you know, as part of the develop developing of those uh, tools, we started in 2007 a project, uh, a software project, um, um, mutual mutual credit project with the software in in El Salvador, um, called Punto Transacciones, which is the one I'm I'm telling you still is working, and in my opinion, still is one of the most successful one we designed back then. And uh, it was really interesting to see because uh, just the design of the software, we spent nearly 200,000 US dollars for the design and maybe another hundred for the implementation on San Salvador, on the city of San Salvador. But um, in, a very, in another rural area, we have a printed, a printed, uh, a printed coin, a printed currency, this one. Um, and because of the, the, the director of the two projects, the one, the rural one and the digital one, they agree within, within them. The people with digital money, well, it's not digital money, it's like a digital um, a database, could go to the local, to the rural area and ask the equivalent of their, of their amount in printed money in the rural area. And when the people of the rural area came to, to San Salvador, they could go to the offices of this cooperative and give them some money and get uh, uh, digital money uh, in the same equivalent, one-to-one. -one. You know, that's why I'm telling you, a caja de compensación is nothing than an extension of the agreement that we call money. And it was really interesting to see how this was working, you know, and at the end, this, this exchange of money between projects, a digital and non-digital one, it stopped because the project in the rural area, the director of the project of the rural area uh, uh, disagree on keep on going with them. So the Caja de Compensación is a dream that we had maybe 20 years ago that with the price of the technology and the blockchain uh, um, capabilities is, is a reality we could do right now. In, well, it's, it's been happening with all the wallets. I've been reading very recently about that, so I don't have a very deep um, understanding. So my my criteria might not be very appropriate, but I read, based on what I read, I think um, initially, uh, as the initial idea I understand, the way I understand it is really, really interesting. And I'm telling you why, because it's a it's a um, community base, you know? Um, and the city of Miami, the, the paper I read, it says it's a collective uh, a currency rather than business-based um, uh, currency. So that's why I like it the, initially a lot, but I think it's gonna be very difficult for, for our community uh, to, decide, to decide how to spend their, their, their local currency, not because it's impossible, but because people is not used to that. So probably, probably, you know, initially, the way I understood initially, I think it's a wonderful idea. 
I really hope it can keep on going. I rather, you know, I rather in, in the stage of the economic situation we are right now as a society, I rather go with a project like this, even if it's mistaken, learn from our mistakes and then redesign it and launch it again, then keep on going the same way we're going right now. The, 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 from the monetary perspective, the situation is just unsustainable from every perspective. So, but I like the idea initially. Uh, accessing the blockchain technology is is very cheap compared with other technologies and compared in in 20 years ago like like i just mentioned you know um so only that is really really a helpful for the social currencies or the or so, social money movement you know we have a social movement in latin america which i'm part of it so just the blockchain technology being so accessible um, is wonderful. And I know, I know of a local currency in Geneva called Le Mans that uh, they had yeah, that I see here. Um, yeah, Le Mans in here. They had printed money and they, they, they migrate uh, to blockchain while keeping the printed money um, because of the technology. As I told you, is way cheaper and is way safer, safer you know. That's from the um, from the technological perspective, you know. It makes it more more um, available the social uh, the social currencies. Another thing is the traceability. You know, when if you could follow, if you could if you could follow where every bill has been, which hands has used those bills, that traceability. Um, Give you the idea of how much wealth one single coin or one single uh, bill creates. That's nearly impossible to measure right now with national currencies and with local currencies. That's another dream we had. Uh, but with um, blockchain technology, we can follow up who's, who, who has which money, when, and where, and how it was used. So we can, this traceability can give us the amount of wealth that is created. So that's called the speed of circulation also, you know, the speed of circulation, not only circulation, but the speed, the speed it, it circulates also create wealth. That's um, from the monetary theory, that is called the multiplier effect from Keynesian economy, the multiplier effect. So the fact that we have the availability to trace that for me is really amazing because we can use all these database information to design uh, coins better, way better. We will have probably in 10 years, another wave of, uh, well, I hope another wave of uh, currencies, way more oriented by community with way better social impact that will be like that because of all this database information that tells us the, where it goes, the speed of circulation, where it creates wealth. Right now, there's a lot of criticism on Bitcoins, for instance, that um, a lot of illegal businesses are doing. And, you know, I think it, this is, um, um, we cannot avoid that, you know, but that's, that was, the, Bitcoin is one of the, 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 the first wave of uh, cryptocurrencies. We will, I hope we we'll learn from that and we have a better second and third and fourth wave of, of of um of current of, of uh, cryptocurrencies um there's one final detail also that i would love to mention about um about blockchain based uh, currencies and this the, the the fact that we can trace the use of the money and how it create wealth and where it goes and where it comes you know um this also the, the, there's a micro macroeconomic um uh, theories telling that if in one territory you have more than one currency, their country, for example, when there is a crisis, economic crisis in, 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 in any country, let's say in the US, uh, from the monetary perspective, a crisis is a reduction on the, on the circulation, circulation of money, you know? If, and then the, the crisis start uh, finishing when the circulation start picking up, you know, I'm thinking on the, on the axis, you know, <laughs> thinking on the on the um, um, graphic perspective. Uh, so you have 
you know, the, the economic crisis began, begins and the amount of money start decreasing. The economic um, uh, crisis uh, ends and recuperation starts and the amount of money start ra raising, you know. There are theories that if in one territory you have at least two currencies, when there is a crisis, people will go and use the other currency, the alternative currency, and then it creates a counteractive effect. And the, the professor that um, give that theory measured that with uh, one of the biggest um, community um, um, mutual credit uh, networks in, in Switzerland. And he demonstrated empirically speaking. So I really think that uh, for a more stable economy, we really have to have local, more than one currencies, more than, uh, several alternative uh, uh, means of exchange of, over one territory. For example, now in Costa Rica, I have a proposal to measure, uh, to, to promote um, reforestation, measure the amount of CO2 per hectare, and then make a, a blockchain relation with the amount of CO2 per hectare and going out and sell that blockchain currency based on CO2, which I think is a wonderful I mean, that For me, that's a second wave, a second wave of currency because it's based on nature, you know? But I'm not, I'm not sure if this is a, a com I'm not completely sure this is a good idea or not, you know, because we have to see it implemented first. But the thing that we're already thinking about that, about uh, creating wealth by preservation of nature, it means a different style of thinking. Previously, when we saw nature, we saw natural resources. We, for some, from some communities, Aboriginal communities, that way of thinking is is uh, outrageous, you know. But now we are we are preserving preserving uh, the CO two on forest and, and creating wealth out of that. So I think it's a wonderful uh, opportunity that we have in our hands.